Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about data encapsulation. Now we've already looked at each of the two models, the OSI model and the TCP IP model, and we have an understanding of the different layers that make up the two models and what sort of functions are located at each layer. Well now we're going to take a look at what happens when data is created at the application layer and it's sent down to each layer below it. Now when this happens, each layer is going to prepend a little bit of information, some control or management information to our original data. And this process is known as encapsulation. And this happens whenever data is transmitted between two devices. So we're going to take a look at how data encapsulation happens inside these two models. Now it's generally the same process, however, there are some different terms used to describe the process in each of the two models. So we're just going to make sure we cover both of them so that all the terms that could possibly come up will be familiar to you. Okay, so we'll begin by taking a look at data encapsulation in the OSI model. Okay, so here we have the OSI model. We have the application layer at the top, and it works its way down to presentation and session, all the way down to the physical layer at the bottom. And now, as we've mentioned before, data is going to be created at the top and passed down to each layer. And when, we, when each layer works with the layer above it or the layer below it, this type of interaction is commonly referred to as adjacent layer interaction. In other words, each layer has to interact with the two layers that are adjacent to it, the layer above it and the layer below it, if one exists. So the application layer interacts with the presentation. Presentation not only interacts with the application layer, but it also interacts with the session layer. Okay? So keep in mind this term, adjacent layer interaction. So we'll create our data, and we start off with something that looks like this. We have our original data right here, but then in front of it, the application layer is going to prepend some information, and this is a management or control information. Now, this is commonly referred to as a header, and it has a label on there, L7H. The L7H stands for Layer 7 Header. Now, we could write application layer header because the application layer is the layer that's applying this header, but it's common practice to use the layer number instead of the name. So instead of saying application layer header, here we have the layer 7 header. And if you just count down, the presentation layer is layer 6, the session layer is layer 5, all the way down to the physical layer, and the physical layer is layer 1. So keep that in mind, the, the numbering of each layer. And that's why it's important to memorize the order of the layers. Okay, so we have our data. The application layer will prepend this header. And this overall package, the original data and the header that is, a, that is prepended to it, this is referred to as a protocol data unit or a PDU. And the PDU represents both of these two pieces, the data and the header. We could refer to this as the Layer 7 PDU because it, because it represents everything that is being created at the application layer, Layer 7. Okay, so the application layer then sends this down to the presentation layer. And the presentation layer is going to do the same thing. It received the original Layer 7 PDU, which has the Layer 7 header and the original data, and then the presentation layer is going to prepend its own header, the Layer 6, or the presentation layer header, to this PDU. And now after it does that, this entire PDU, since it now has a Layer 6 header on it, can be referred to as the Layer 6 PDU, or Layer 6 Protocol Data Unit. You see, so at each layer we have a protocol data unit. It's just it, it, the L7 or the L6 will change. The name will change depending on which layer it was created at. Okay, and so now this process is going to keep repeating. It goes down to the session layer where a new header is applied and we now have a 
layer 5 PDU. That is then sent down to the transport layer. And you can see each time everything from the layer above it is passed down. And when the headers are added, so here at layer 4, this header is added, this is called encapsulation. This is the process where each layer takes the information from above it and then adds a header to it. That process is encapsulation. Okay, so this keeps going. We get down to the network layer and the data link layer. Now something unique happens at the data link layer. Not only do we have a layer 2 header put on there, but we have a layer 2 trailer added as well. The data link layer is the only layer that adds not only a header, but also a trailer. All the other layers only add headers. So the, the layer 2 PDU is unique in that it has a header and a trailer. And when we talk about Ethernet in detail in another tutorial, you'll see what functions occur in that layer 2 trailer. Now we only have one more layer to go, but now it gets interesting because the physical layer does not add a header or a trailer to it. In fact, it doesn't add anything because this is the layer where the information is going to be sent across the physical network. Okay, so this is the process of encapsulation where headers are added at each layer. Inside the header is some control information. And at each layer, after a header is added, you now have a protocol data unit. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when the data is sent across the physical network, is received at the other computer, and how it interprets all of this information it just received. So here we have PC1, and it's going to transmit some data over here to PC2. So we start with our original data, and PC1 sends it all the way down the stack. It gets to the physical layer where it's sent out on the network. So here it goes over to PC2. Now when PC2 receives the information, it's going to receive it on the physical layer, and then it's going to start working its way up the OSI model. So after it receives it, the first layer to be examined is the data link layer, or the layer 2 header and trailer. And PC2 is going to use that information to determine what it should do with it. So that's where the headers come into play. They have that control information. Now PC2 can use that control information, which was originally supplied by PC1, to figure out how it should treat everything inside the header and the trailer at layer 2. And then it'll go ahead and it'll work its way up the protocol stack, and the same thing will happen. The network layer on PC2 will examine the layer 3 header, figure out what to do, and send it up, and that'll keep happening until finally it gets up to the application layer, where an application will go ahead and take a look at the information, and then finally get to the data itself and use and interpret that data. So the information that was applied by PC1 at each of the different layers of the OSI model is then used by PC2. Now this type of interaction is called same layer interaction. It's another term you should make note of. So whereas before we talked about adjacent layer interaction where each layer works with the layer above and below it, well, here we're talking about the same layer on two different devices working together. So, again, the information, let's say, uh, prepended by the presentation layer, by PC1, is going to be the same information used by the presentation layer on PC2. Okay, so the same layer, the presentation layer, at both devices, PC1 and 2, are going to use that information, and that's how they're interacting. So now we can see why that information in part is added at each step of the process of this data communication. Okay, so that is encapsulation in the OSI model. Let's move on now and take a look at the TCP IP model. Now here we have the TCP IP model. We have the four layers, the application, transport, internet, and network access.
And so let's take a look at what happens. We start off by creating some data. And whatever application is going to be creating that data, whatever program, will go ahead and append its header. Now, this could be anything. This could be uh, HTTP. This could be FTP. It depends on which program actually is responsible for creating the data. Now, this is going to be sent down to the transport layer. And the transport layer is going to add a header as well. And this time we're using um, protocol examples. Um, so we're here, it's TCP. Remember, it could be UDP because TCP and UDP are the protocols that are used at the transport layer. However, we're not using terminology like uh, protocol data unit or we're not using the L7 header or the L6 header. Those are specific to the OSI model. Here at the transport layer, the header that's applied and the data behind it is referred to as a segment. So we're not talking PDUs anymore. This now is a very specific name. When you hear about a segment, think transport layer. Now in terms of the actual encapsulation process itself, the same thing pretty much happens. This is then passed down to the internet layer. And here, another header is added. This time, it's by the IP protocol. And this entire thing has a unique name as well. Again, we're not going to call it a protocol data unit. Here, at the internet layer, this is called a packet. So the segment that was sent down to the internet layer is then put inside a packet. And then finally, the internet layer is going to send the packet down to the network access layer. And here, just like layer two at the OSI model, both a header and a trailer will be added to the packet. And when this happens, this new chunk here is going to be referred to as a frame. Okay, so we have segments, which are then passed down to the internet layer, where the segment is encapsulated and is then called a packet. The packet is then sent down to the network access layer, where a header and a trailer are put on top of it, so it's encapsulated again, and now it's called a frame. And this is the encapsulation process of the TCP IP model. And again, here, the data would then go to the physical layer and then be sent over the network to the destination. Okay, so the same process is happening. Encapsulation is happening at each layer, but we're pretty much just using different terminology. So make sure to memorize which of these new terms correspond to which layer. Okay? And then just to be complete, if we take a look at an example of data actually being transmitted, we have PC1 here, and it's going to send information to PC2, this time using the TCP IP model. Well, PC1 creates some data. It is sent down, ultimately getting to the physical network itself. It's sent across the network to PC2. And then PC2 is going to use the information supplied by PC1, the headers, in order to figure out what to do with it. So this same layer interaction that we talked about in the OSI model also happens in the TCP IP model. So PC2 looks at the header in the trailer, sends it up to the internet layer where the IP header supplied by PC1 is going to be examined by PC2. So again, the same layer at each device is going to use that information, same layer interaction. It's sent up to the transport where the header here, the TCP header is examined. And then finally, it's up to the application layer where the application itself eventually gets that data and uses that data. Okay, so the same thing happens in terms of same layer interaction. And then, of course, we just covered the adjacent layer interaction. Okay, so to summarize what we covered, we now know there's a process called encapsulation. And this is where each layer of the OSI model or the TCP IP model adds a little control or management information to the original data. Now in the OSI model, we know that that control information plus the original data is referred to as a protocol data unit. Headers are added, 
And we refer to the layers, the number of each layer, as opposed to the name itself. So the layer five header, as opposed to the session layer header. Now in the TCP IP model, we have some different terms, but the process is pretty much the same. Segments are created at the transport layer, packets are created at the internet layer, and then frames are created at the network access layer. And again, both the adjacent layer interaction and the same layer interaction occurs in both of the two models. All right, so that is data encapsulation in both the OSI model and the TCP IP model. Thanks for watching.